Uh, should anti-vaxxers be allowed to listen to music? <laughs> no. <laughs> what a question! Should anti-vaxxers be allowed to listen to music? OK, uh, anti-vaxxer is a term that has a very broad definition as well. So um, this is actually about the... Well, this is the latest in this ongoing saga uh, regarding Joe Rogan at Spotify. And, of course, Joe Rogan uh, signed a huge deal with Spotify, $100 million, I think it was, yeah. and went to, went to Spotify. And ever since the start, there have been problems. There have been members of staff at Spotify. Because Joe Rogan makes a point of talking to people with all sorts of different opinions, some of those opinions are problematic. And members of staff at Spotify, uh, because they're so enthralled to this critical social justice ideology, this identitarian nonsense, they were saying that we should smack trigger warnings onto his episode or cut out uh, certain episodes. In fact, when, when Spotify initially put the episodes up, some were missing rather suspiciously. I think they've come back. Um, but the point is, this has been an ongoing thing. Neil Young, the musician, uh, then turned up and said, well, either you get rid of Joe Rogan's uh, episodes or off Spotify or you can't play my music anymore. Uh, and then uh, this week, Joni Mitchell has done the same thing. Joni Mitchell has joined forces with Neil Young. Uh, I'm going to come to you first on this, Nick. Oh, good. I've got so much to say. Yeah, it, it's... <laughs> Well, firstly, I've got 14 Neil Young albums, right? And I've now burnt them all. Uh, and I, I'm old enough to have them on combat discs. The neighbours complained. It was very smelly. But it, it does create a, a dilemma. Can you listen to Neil Young anymore, knowing he's an authoritarian pro-censorship, big pharma shill? It is a bit of a problem for some of us. But it's very complicated, because Neil Young, a lot of people said, OK, this is ironic, because it's a hippie now being pro-establishment. A bit more complicated, because he was pro-Reagan back in the day. He was quite jingoistic after 9-11. He's had various different views. Uh, but he's even, he even sung about punks taking over from his, his kind of rock in the song Thrashers. So it's all very complicated. But what's interesting is Neil Young, he, he's kind of missed the way the culture's changed. You know, back, back in the day, it was rock music was the big counterculture thing. Now it's moved to podcasts and discussion shows. Mm. A bit like this. Andrew Doyle is the new Neil I mean, Young. You can't in can't many ways. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and I doubt Neil Young cares about that because he's an old, rich man now. But there, there's, there's that irony. Also, he overestimated his own clout because he lost the debate. But I think yeah. he's also underestimated how the culture is shifting. It's almost like art has kind of failed because movies are kind of rubbish now, as we've just said. China is censoring things. Art's not as good anymore, but discussion is where it's at because we're almost like trying to figure out where we are in the West now. But do you think it's that calculated? Do you think he's, trying, he's thinking this is the way people are going, this is the fashionable thing? I think it's probably more that this is his belief. I think it's a, a, a sincere belief. No, I don't think it's calculated at all. I just think it's, it's interesting how the people have been very much on the side of Rogan.